this is where the water comes from for our garden. It runs over there beside the shed to the end of the beds. This is what we like to do with the hose. We run it around that pole one time. So when you pull on that hose, you pull on that pole. You don't pull right there. You can break that. Especially when the hose gets dry right at the old. But you can't break that. You can pull all you want. Last time we had to replace one of these, it cost $750. I don't need to be pulling on it. This one's mounted in concrete. But people don't know what this is. It's a drainable exterior hose faucet, usually used on a farm. When you close this handle, a valve opens up under the ground and drains that pipe below the freezing point. So it can't freeze in the wintertime. We can come down there anytime we want. And we got water, even though we have shut it off in the house. But I have to turn it on. I got to turn the valve on to the garden. I generally leave these off when I'm not using them. And now I got to water in those marigolds I just put out. I'm going to water in my marigolds. I've got 100 feet of red rubber hose as a header. I've got 50 feet or more of a normal garden hose. And it's been sitting in the sun all day. So if I just was trying to water that plant, that's mysterious no plant there, I'm putting salt and hot water on it. You gotta run these hoses a little while. You got aluminum tube, grab it by the tube, you'll feel it when it gets cold, otherwise feel the water. And just because it cools off for a minute, that doesn't mean it was sitting in the shade and the rest of it should be putting boiling hot water on the plant. You don't wanna do that. I'm having to do some watering because I haven't put down all the irrigation yet. It is time consuming, I'll be glad when I get it all down. You notice I put a pretty strong post on that corner and drove it in the ground. I want to go to the end of this bed and water that, all these beans. I can do it from one side. I've got a couple of marigolds up on the end I need to hit with the water. See, I'm up under the shade of that nice fig tree. Now we're out in the blazing sun. What I did is I take the hose back to my uh, zone valve and I have it on that side of the pole. So when I pick up that hose over there and walk this way, it slides on that pole. If I had to water some at the end of this row of tomatoes, the tomatoes are all over here on the left side. I could bring my hose right by here and let it ride on that stake. I could let it ride on that stake. You need to pay attention to where you put stuff so that you, if you do have to water with the hose, you can get in and out. Like right now, I'm having to water those cukes up there and those three marigolds. I just let the hose run on that stake. Now I've got a, a cucumber growing on the end of this pole, so it'd be a little tougher for me to come by there without killing that plant with the hose. But right now, I can run by that one because I don't have anything on it. And then I'll have the irrigation all down and I won't have to drag a hose too much. But we do have to get a hose up here on this end to uh, water these when it really gets hot. And see my zone valve ends right there at that tomato plant. Now I will hook onto that zone valve and come out here and put all this under another zone or maybe even two with a splitter in the line. So my garden hose doesn't have to be that long because I will attach to the end of the header. Just like a faucet on your house. So I only need 35 feet to get to the end of the garden with the hose. This 50 foot hose I'm using right now, it's hard to get that from that header all the way down there by that hose. All the way to here and all the way to the end of the garden. Just might want to figure out how you place your poles or whether you need to put a pole in. Like if I had the water here, I could just put a pole in right there at the end of my toe. And when I drag a hose in and out of here, it won't hurt, hurt the plants. Just something to think about. 